today to have an opportunity to ask you about questions about the health of Ohio County, get your views on what your part as elected officials will be to help change the culture of the health of this community. And I think with that, we're ready to start. Yes, I think probably we, uh, everybody has an agenda, and I think before we really start the panel, we need to cover just a few basic things. We can uh, we'll distribute the, there is uh, on your table, there's uh, kind of a summary of some of the activities. Our big main areas that we're focusing on are some access to care, reducing <coughs> obesity, and preventing substance abuse. Again, those activities that are currently there, but that's not all of them. Because I know today the care, we care has, has some that uh, we weren't able to include. So that's just a sampling you're looking at of things that are, that are going on in Ohio County as a part of the coalition, coalition is group of individuals and um, organizations that, that, that are really working to improve the health of Ohio County. Because health is something you just, you, if you don't work on it, things go, go backwards. And again, we're wanting to try to improve it. Uh, you might also look at uh, county health rankings. Those are out now. Uh, we're going to be discussing those next week, next month's meeting, and those uh, really are important and have got a lot of possibilities for us to uh, explore. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Megan Morris. She's from Shrant, uh, Green River Area Development District Regional Health Council, facilitator, coordinator. Uh, she can probably give me more time uh, that. She has a, a special event that she'd like to announce. Um, I'm actually really happy to be here to present this today. I'm also a commissioner um, for the Kentucky Commission on Community Service and Volunteerism for the state of Kentucky. So April is National Volunteer Appreciation Month. So I'm very excited today to present to the Ohio County Color Coalition for all the volunteer work you all have done, a governor's citation for the great work that you all do in Ohio County. Start off with our, our state candidates. Do you want to introduce themselves? I thought we had. 
that's called leadership, and that's uh, what I think the state senate is supposed to show. Well, obviously, it is an issue because not only do you bring up the health care cost if you employ people who are not well, but they're going to miss a lot of work. So people are going to come to an area where the people are not healthy to operate a good business because you don't, you lose a lot with absenteeism and you lose a lot of training someone and then they leave because they're ill after a few years. So that's obviously an issue. I think the thing the state government can look at doing is investing in a lot of research as to underlying causes, and that's a lot of what you all do in this commission, that you all look at what's causing the people in Middle Ohio County to be less well, maybe. So if we can invest in research, look at the rates of poverty, how that affects our health, uh, the health of the children, the health of the community, I think research is the answer to that. Find out what are underlying causes and then attack the causes, and sometimes they can be attacked through legislation. Okay. I'll see, see a bunch of candidates, so we'll move on to the uh, local candidates, and I'm going to throw a curveball because the sure candidates probably are used uh, to curveball things to happen that, that you don't expect to happen. And uh, he and I sort of handwritten this question, so I'll just pass it on here. But, uh, what do you see? Uh, we're going to direct this question to the sure candidates, and uh, Mr. Thompson will be first. What do you see as ways that your office can collaborate with the schools? local governments, the business community to improve public safety? Well, I think that some of the things that we're already doing, obviously we have the SROs in the schools. Uh, we have been in schools many times and continue to do uh, early education programs within the school. We take our canine units to the schools and do programs. Uh, working with the businesses, um, as far as uh, uh, working with some of the pharmacies and such with the uh, pill problems that we have in Ohio County and every other county that surrounds us. Uh, we work with them uh, uh, as far as trying to uh, figure out who is the ones abusing these, getting these pills that should be getting them, uh, working with OCAMP or some of the uh, programs that they have and getting the uh, information in so people can, can uh, write, on the, uh, uh, write to us, uh, give us tips. So uh, there's, there's quite a few things that we are doing already, uh, many things that, that we will continue to do. We work with Together We Care, uh, with many of their programs, uh, uh, as far as underage drinking and, and uh, that type of stuff. Um, Thank you. 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 Are we on? Let it go. I'll read this question again for Mr. Beatty. Uh, what do you see as ways that your office can collaborate with the schools, local government, the business community to improve public safety? Do you need a microphone? Sir? No, no, ma'am. I don't uh, think I can speak loud enough. Uh, I feel like that we, uh, we you know, we, I went back in, in 2006 and I joined a, an old camp board here. It was an Ohio County Coalition for Methamphetamine Prevention. And I've, I've held true to those those values that we described there in old camp. And one of those being prevention in our schools. We have got to get back into our schools, get programs set up. We lost our DARE program here. Uh, we've got to get those programs set back up in our schools to where we, we are, are aiming toward prevention. We have got to We've got to get our kids back under the understanding that, that this stuff is bad and we have to start at an early age with them. Uh, so, uh, you know, Old Camp, uh, together with CARE, actually started that program and uh, I, I think it, it stands for the well-being and the health of our communities and we have to have that prevention. I, I, I say it time and time again, uh, prevention is, is, uh, is where we have to be. So, uh, along with that, Anything we can do to, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, program where we, uh, uh, and I'm drawing a blank on, uh, on it, where we, we monitor the use of prescriptions where the doctors can look at them and, and say, hey, well, they're not doctor shopping. We have to have that program in place to have our business. Yeah. Okay. 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 Ok
Catherine, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on to our magistrate candidates and then they'll look at the sheet at number two. And the second question states, what do you see as the role of the city, county governments, or your government that you're running for in promoting health and wellness in Ohio County? And we'll first begin with Mr. Arnold. In looking uh, over the regulations to become a magistrate, I saw that the, the county government has the authority to establish or uh, monies or accumulate monies to be used for health and welfare of the citizens of Ohio County. So I think that with that, that a lot of these programs need to be brought before uh, the courts uh, so that they can help them financially uh, with the programs. Okay. Mr. Small? You know, I'm going to read quick. I'll read it again. I'm, just, I'm, going, to, I'm going to give you a chance to, to move on. Question two. What do you see as the role of the county, city government, and in this case, city county, promoting health and wellness in Ohio County? Just have to check it out. <laughs> Our number one goal, and a lot of it has done started, is physical activity. Physical activity is a must. We all know that even the physical activities of people that have other problems, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity. You know, I'm not the picture perfect idea for health, but I also know that it's my decision. We have to understand and teach the people that the physical activity, the program with uh, that they're putting in place now and started on with the physical stations set around the walking trails at the park. That's wonderful. You know, I would have never thought of that. But I would be more apt to go walk now if I could stop every once in a while and breathe and do something else. And, and it's really promoting that physical activity in a routine is what is going to increase our health work out. And, uh, you know, I'm a worst procrastinator, 30 seconds. Uh, in the world, you know, I work and work and work, and I say, oh, I ain't got time to walk. But if I would, if we will take the time to get out there and do that physical activity, we all can live to be a whole lot happier while we are living, and tend to like live longer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our judge executive candidates, and we'll look at uh, question two, the same one, uh, one and uh, I think we can uh, move on to that. What do you see as the role uh, of the county government in promoting health and wellness in Ohio County? And we'll start with Mr. Johnson. Thank you. I think county government has a large role in uh, health and wellness in the county. Uh, we can promote uh, healthy lifestyles in other ways, but uh, we can provide places and facilities for people to exercise that doesn't have a place at home. Uh, we have six trails in the county now, paved trails for people to walk on, and I can. I was. Uh, I'm proud that I actually helped on several of those. Uh, and we also, I support our uh, wellness center, which is huge in uh, providing a, a way of wellness in the uh, county. They teach wellness and provide a place for physical fitness to take place. And I promote that uh, through uh, incentives to our county workers and uh, trying to get funding for the wellness center. So that's a huge part of, uh, of our plan to help with, with wellness. But we are going to have to be more proactive on the uh, on promotion. Thank you. Okay, well, the same question goes to Ms. Morris. And again, I'll repeat that. What do you see as the role of the city, excuse me, of the county government in promoting health and wellness? I see uh, the office having a, a very large um, contribution to well being. Um, we need to listen, and by virtue of this office, you're put on many boards. You're just automatically a, a member of a lot of boards. And I know that our county is fortunate to have, uh, the judge alluded to the walking trails. And 
and uh, some of them have the, or one of them I think has the strengthening equipment along the way, so you can exercise and, and get your strengthening there. Um, I love to exercise, but I'm not by myself. So I would like to see more community efforts to get people get up, get out, work out. Um, I had some ideas about um, community gardens uh, when I worked for the city of Hartford. Uh, Mayor Hendricks, who is a registered nurse, mentioned community gardens, and I thought that was a good idea to stimulate people with physical activity and let them contribute. So, uh, yes, county government would have a very active role. Thank you. Okay, and then we'll have Mr. Phelps respond to the question, what do you see as the role of the county government in promoting health and wellness? Well, for one, like Judge Johnson said, we have a wellness center here very active in their well-being and health. And, uh, I think we need to promote that and keep that open and get our trail to walk on, and that's very important. And uh, we uh, need to, I think, to promote that very much, especially the Wellness Center. And, uh, that's all I've got to say. Thanks, sir. And we'll move on back to our state candidates. And if you'll look at question 10 on your list, and the question states, and we'll begin with Mr. Cox this time. Do you support a statewide smoke-free law for the state of Kentucky? I'm open to the ideas, and I say that because of my experience down in Lockwood County. When I was mayor down there, uh, our health board began the process of implementing a countywide uh, smoke-free regulation. Our fiscal court did adopted one on its own, they watered it down pretty good, but they still adopted it. And none of the negative things that anybody has to say about what happens when you adopt one happen. No businesses closed, nobody got voted out of office, uh, you know, none of these four stories happen. As a mayor, I don't like it when Frankfurt would come down and tell me how to run my city. I didn't feel like they needed to, but there's some times where they have to. And this is potentially one of them. Uh, I don't want to stand here and say I'll vote for it because I haven't read a bill. And I don't think I should vote for bills. I don't think anybody should vote for bills if they haven't read it. And so I reserve the right to vote no, but I'm open to the idea and uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. But I, I can tell you that the horror stories that you hear uh, do not happen down in Madisonville or Hopkins County. And uh, the more research you do on it, the, the more you find out that those are just horror stories and attempts to scare people. And if there are benefits for, for passing something like this. And Mr. Turley, I'll read a question for you. Is, do you support a statewide smoke-free law for this state? On a personal level, I love that I can go into a restaurant and there are not people making me sick, smoking beside me. I mean, physically sick. I love that I can get on an airplane and not become ill because they're smoking and it's all over the airplane. So on that level, I really appreciate not having to deal with smoke. It actually does bother me physically, personally, it does. But this is one of those coins that has both sides. And I know that people, Kentucky is a tobacco state. Uh, we raise tobacco. We have always raised it. I, I told somebody the other day, I used to put my little girl on, when she was little on one side of the center and I rode the other side and I set tobacco and then, you know, hold the tobacco and, and we raised tobacco. So, and there, so you've got the issue of the economics versus that health issue versus uh, the individual's personal freedom and liberties and their own choices in their own places. So that is such a complicated issue. I honestly cannot tell you an answer right now. If anybody wants to talk to me and if I should get elected and you want to come and tell me your side, I would entertain hearing it all day because I really don't know the answer to that question. Thank you. And we'll propose Mr. C.B. Emery the same question. Do you support a statewide smoke-free for Kentucky? I do not smoke. I have never smoked. I encourage people not to smoke. However, uh, it is true, uh, we are a tobacco state. I do serve on the legislative tobacco task force. I think uh, we should not have smoking in public buildings. 
and uh, public transportation. However, uh, other than that, I think it's a local issue. The government closest to the people uh, is the best government. And uh, the cities and the counties wish to uh, pass uh, smoke free laws. I think that should be their project. I don't think that, uh, we should mandate that from the state. The majority of uh, members in the General Assembly believe the same way. That's the reason the law did not pass again this year. I think it's a local issue, kind of like uh, the local option in alcohol uh, situation. And uh, uh, it is true. Uh, I do not vote for any bill that I have not read in its final form because it can change quite a bit uh, through committee. So I'm not sure what will happen in the future, but uh, at this point, uh, I think it's a local issue and we support the local action statement. Okay, thank you. Well, definitely see uh, see what everyone thinks about this because um, you know it, you, you see both sides of the issue here so let's hear uh, from our magistrates and we'll ask the question do you feel the second in smoke excuse me are you in favor of an ordinance that will eliminate all eliminate smoking in all public places and places of in in Ohio County why or why not and we'll direct that to Mr. Small Smoke-free Ohio County is a wonderful idea, but it is the business owner's choice. Uh, I have my choice. I do not want to take my daughters into a place that people are chain smoking. I do not want my daughters around that, but it is my choice to take them in there. I will keep my business from this place. But for me, as a small business owner, to demand somebody not smoke in their building, in their establishment, I can't do it. Uh, I'll be happy to support the smoke-free entities, but it is not my place, I don't believe, to forcibly force people to have a smoke-free environment. I would hope that people would do that on their own. I would hope that people would understand that a smoke-free facility will get more customers, will have better business, and promote smoke-free in their employees. But now, I cannot stand behind forcing somebody to be smoke-free. Okay, and just this comment here, we can see that one side says, let somebody else do it. And again, I think probably we haven't had the, uh, the business owners, but I think probably that's kind of where I was, the business owners want somebody else to mandated for them so again that's a second to add in there let's um, move on to our judge executive candidates and we'll also hit in uh, question 12 did I uh, mess up okay Mr. Arnold I'm sorry do I support uh, smoke free yes I do some 10 years ago I had bypass surgery and the first thing the doctor told me when I left the hospital was to stay away from secondhand smoke. So we came back after being operated on, hung a sign in our business that said no more smoking. They could walk in smoking. Uh, you could be back in the bolt in and smell the smoke and it would really, really uh, bother you. So I just hung up signs to stop it and yes, I would support it uh, all the way. Thank you. And we'll move on to our judge executive candidates now. We'll ask the uh, question, question 12 on your list, are you in favor of the ordinance, an ordinance that would eliminate smoking in all public places and places of employment in Ohio County? And we'll direct this question to Ms. Morris. Um, well, it's very touchy. Um, I wish there wasn't such a thing as tobacco. Although my family raised tobacco and afforded us a, a very good supplemental income for, for many years. It 
it's a double-edged sword. You're going to make friends and enemies regardless of which approach you take. Of course, this could be resolved by the current court before the new court comes in. That's just something that remains to be seen. But I would like to have input from the people. I, before I made a decision, and I would just want to listen to them and, and try to look for some type of logical and fair resolution to it. Thank you. Uh, well, Moses, is that the question? To Mr. Phelps, are you in favor of an ordinance that would eliminate smoking in all public places and place employment in a wild camp? Well, again, I think that uh, uh, I'm for non-smoking in the orders, but uh, in Ohio County, I think you have to leave it up to the, the restaurant owners and business owners. Uh, that should be their choice, I think, and, uh, and I certainly uh, myself would support it, but uh, I think uh, in Ohio County people, they're going to want to make their own decisions. People are fast in restaurants and small businesses, so uh, that's how I feel about it. Thank you. And the last candidate, uh, Mr. Johnston, I'll read the question. Are you in favor of an ordinance that will eliminate smoking in all public places, place employment in Ohio County? Uh, yes. The answer is that way first. If there's no, no drama. Uh, I too was raised on tobacco revenue. I only smoked one time in my life. I was five years old. I wish there had been a smoking ban there. <laughs> but uh, I haven't always felt this way. But actually, four years ago during the campaign, there was folks that talked to me. Uh, uh, Ms. Ross that's not here today, Becky Horn, many of you. And, uh, and, and I, I do believe in individual rights and the rights of the business owners. But our health has to take priority over those. So uh, I'll sum it up the way I started. Answer is yes. Interrupt there, please. And we'll go up to our chair candidates, beginning with Mr. Bailey. And this again is another homemade question here. It's I think more applies directly to your role. Uh, what do you see as the most acute public safety need for Ohio County? And what would be your preferred approach to starting a solution? I would say that it would be our drug enforcement. Um, we, uh, we have been many years trying to do away with it. I don't think we will ever, ever eliminate our drug problem here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I think that we, with prevention, with coalitions throughout the county, individual communities that have uh, community meetings that we go to, <coughs> go to and educate them, educate our kids. I, I think with that we can, uh, along with a strict enforcement program and you know uh, uh, maybe even a treatment. You know we, we haven't looked into the to the to the end of the, the spectrum where the treatment is, and maybe we need to focus more on that too. So. Uh, it, you know, it costs twenty-three to twenty-five thousand dollars per person from the ER through the judicial system into treatment through that whole process. You're looking at about twenty-five thousand dollars. So, I think I think our drug problem would be my main focus. Thank you. Okay, again, I'll read this uh, question again from Mr. Thompson. What do you see as the most acute public safety need for a lot of what would be your preferred approach to starting a solution? Again, I have to agree with, uh, with uh, Mr. Bain that obviously our drug problem is a very big issue here in Ohio County. I think that we do attack that very aggressively here uh, in Ohio County. The number of arrests and major busts have gone up. I don't necessarily think that everybody that we arrest for drugs needs to go to jail. I personally have been saying for four years since I've been here, three and a half years, that we really need substance abuse treatment centers here. We can send our folks off to Louisville or Nashville or other places, but what it takes is family support. And it's hard for families when they're working to go to Louisville and Nashville. So I think necessarily putting them in jail is not the answer. The drug absolutely is the issue. I think uh, uh, holding people accountable for their actions uh, and then obviously the programs, uh, uh, Making people aware of what we're doing with our Facebook, newspapers, media, 
and letting uh, the kids know and everybody else know that we're just not going to tolerate it here. We'd be lying, Tracy and I, if we said we're going to get rid of drugs in Ohio County. That ain't going to happen. But we sure can make it tough on people and make the opportunities less for them to put their hands on this stuff. Hey, uh, kind of breaking format here. It's question kind of come back. Anybody have a response or a question they want to pose? Uh, it seems that uh, in reading the newspaper the last day or so, this, the state legislature passed a law uh, that incarceration is not the preferred method and approach to uh, for juveniles. And again, if if this question, but if that is the way it's going to be, how can and in what ways can the county sheriff department help in uh, making sure that there's adequate uh, treatment and counseling in Ohio County for juvenile drug offenders? And uh, Mr. Uh, Baby again. Well, <clears throat> Sheriff will tell you the one thing we try to stay clear of are juveniles. Uh, they, they, they come with a lot of restrictions and a lot of laws that we have to get in deep and look at and, and uh, it kind of gets uh, uh, gruesome sometimes. But I think with our, you know, again, let, let's start in the schools and let's, let's implement programs to, to where we can get in there and touch those young kids to where maybe that we're not fighting them in the end when they when they become 18. Let's let's start the schools and educate those kids, and, and you know start up some kind of uh, a dare program like we had before. Uh, I don't think it's that far fetched that we can get in there, get programs set up through the high schools, and and, and use our resources uh, here in our county and the, the people here that all want to group together and make that a goal. So I would focus back in the younger age of the juveniles and I guess if you know we we maybe we could look at, at some kind of federal money to help out with programs where we can share some uh, time with those kids maybe that we're in trouble so lock them away. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Thompson. Yeah, I certainly uh, uh, think that basically it really starts at home. It starts at home with the parents and we as the, as the sheriff needs to hold those folks accountable, okay? And that's what they need to learn. But we also can do it through our churches. We certainly can do it through our schools. And even though we don't have a dare program in our high school, it doesn't mean that the programs we've got are not working and not doing it. Statistics show that the dare actually, uh, sometimes in the most places, doesn't work. So we have to address it. We have to attack it in other ways. So we do have programs in the schools. And uh, it might not be called there, but there's other things that we can do. So I certainly believe it has to start at home, also in the churches, and schools is one of the best places because that's where they spend most of their time anyway. But at the sheriff office, we got to hold those parents accountable. Also. Okay. Uh, somebody may help me with this. Is there a, uh, I don't know which Gary Hall was here, is there a, uh, Ordinance that holds people accountable that supplies liquor to juveniles. Okay, so that's that's a big plus for Ohio County because a lot of communities have have really struggled with getting that uh, proposed. Okay, moving right along, we'll go back to, to the, our our state candidates, and we'll, if you'll look on your list for number five. Well, again, we're about 25 minutes. Uh, again, uh, we can come. Do we have a lot of questions? Oh, yeah, we got questions. So. Okay, well, let's, this, again, for the uh, sake of, let's don't let people leave without answering a question. Let's open it up now to questions, and if we need to, we can come back. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if, more questions for the candidate in the morning. If you would, uh, if you have a question, if you would uh, direct it to uh, the candidates or to all, you know, sort of group candidates, and again, uh, repeat that if you would. Uh, show hands. Yes, Doc. Ask now. Yes, sir, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm Dr. Patton, I'm the Chief Medical Officer at the hospital. I have a question for state candidates and one question for the local candidates, if you please. Uh, my question to the state candidates is, you know, we all talk about 
wellness and prevention, but once you are in office, what kind of programs or funding activities you are going to be involved in, in supporting our local activities like funding a wellness center and uh, building trails for people to walk on. And I have a question for the state candidates. So judge executive candidates first. Yes. That's what judge executive. That's for the state. state candidates. Okay, the state candidates. Let's hear from uh, Mr. Emery. I think we need to set uh, good examples ourselves, and uh, uh, also uh, funding is very difficult in, mm -hmm. in this last budget. Fifty-three state agencies received cuts from two and a half to five percent. Uh, so there isn't lots of funding available, but uh, I certainly support uh, uh, recreational activities and uh, funding of uh, trails to walk and, and run on, and those types of activities. It's be very difficult for the state to fund individual wellness centers, but uh, uh, if the funds were available, uh, that could be looked at. I, I uh, use the wellness center locally. I'm a runner. I've ran over 640 races. I don't smoke or drink. I think it's up to us to uh, set good examples ourselves and communicate and educate the citizens as to the benefits of uh, good exercise. Ms. Turley? Well, of course, Mr. has been there, so he definitely knows the way it is as when it relates to money and funding. But I do think that you could look at maybe developing some type of matching program where the local community that sees the need and is willing to do like you have done on things to initiate it, then apply for a matching type program so it wouldn't just be waiting for the state to get it into their budget, but perhaps there could be some type of uh, matching situation set up that would make it a little more attractive to the state budget. Okay, Mr. Cox. Doctor, I want to go to the State Senate to help you all get the money that you all need to do the projects that you all want to do here. And I would say to you that I will support the lift proposal. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's a local option sales tax. I'm not going to vote for the sales tax, but what that allows Ohio County to do is have their own election and decide for themselves if they want to pay an extra penny, up to an extra penny, to fund their own projects. It's not Frankfurt passing a tax increase and sending it down here. It's giving you all the option to vote for your own. And as a former mayor, I would have loved to have that tool in my toolbox. We could have done all kinds of wellness projects. We've got over 500 acres of parks in Madisonville, and we struggle with what to do with it and how to pay for it every single day. And I'm telling you, if I had that toolbox, or that tool in my toolbox as mayor, we Madisonville would be the city of parks, not Louisville. And so my answer to you is I want to give you all the resources, help you all get your own resources, to do the projects that you all think are important, not the projects that frankly I think are important. I know I'll get tired of hearing the expression thinking out of the box. I think sometimes when we talk about we can't get funding, we need to think out of the box a little bit. I know in Lyon County, when you go down there to land between the lakes of that area, they, you've got extra sales tax there. Now that may be connected somehow to tourism, and that may be a way that, uh, way that, that could, could work as well. So again, there's, there's got to be tax credits and things that are potentially uh, or the state can be involved in as well. Again, Dr. Pathy, uh, your yes. second question. Yeah, the second, uh, thank you for the state candidates to uh, be very candid with your answers. The second question, I'm going to wear a different hat as the chairman of the board for the Wellness Center. We are uh, in line to receive some uh, funding that was line item, and there seems to be some resistance on the uh, court for, from some magistrates. Uh, are you, once in office, are you going to release those funds for 100000 that was line item to the wellness center? And we're driving this to our magistrate candidate? Can magistrate candidate. Okay, let's hear from the magistrate candidates, uh, Mr. Small. I think one of our biggest assets in this is our wellness center. Our wellness center needs to be top notch. I mean, I got to blow his horn. I told him earlier, I said, Tab. The other day when you mentioned outside revenue programs, wow, you know, I've been waiting forever for your stack to go off. And we have to take care of our wellness center. Our wellness center is our, our stabilization for our health in this county. And, you know, we understand that it's far away for some, 
but we try to build walking parks, we try to build places where that physical activity can come in. But yes, I support the Wellness Center, and I believe that's our strong hope to the situation. Okay, Mr. Arnold. I support the Wellness Center also, but what's happened that uh, the money isn't there uh, by not being on uh, the board yet or being a, a magistrate, I don't know what funds are going to be available. So until next year, uh, who knows? This year, I mean, you still got people on the, that are elected to do that. And but if I do get elected and there's money available, yes, I support the, the wellness center. Okay, I think we uh, finished with magistrates, and we'll go to our. Judge Executive Candace and Mr. Phelps. Well, I'll tell you how I fix the deal. As a judge executive, I'd go to the bank and borrow the money and pay the government center off. Then the big problem would go. And then, uh, then we'd worry about, uh, and I think you can probably buy it for a lot less than what's over on it. So, in that, in that regard, I think if we did that, and we'd solve a big problem and deal with, and we'd be responsible for the for the note. But uh, I think the wellness center pretty well take care of itself. You get a decent loan for the money, and uh, uh, that's how I think that solve the problem. Thank you. Let's uh, go, Miss Morris. Well, I agree with Sam. It is a tremendous asset in our county. It has the only swimming pool. Uh, that provides aqua therapy or just for swim teams. The little youth basketball teams take advantage of it. Um, if I'm elected judge executive, I'd have no problem with subsidizing the wellness center, but I kind of thought if we're using tax dollars, they only go so far. And I'd love to see some sort of benefit for the general public, maybe a, a day a week or something that it would be free to just anyone. You wouldn't have to have memberships. Um, I just, I know we've got to be careful as responsible officials and weigh the cost of a benefit with uh, the benefit received. And uh, there's a huge difference to me between essential needs and beneficial needs. But I know our county is just now beginning to recognize our homeless people, so that's something very important as well. Thank you. Mr. Johnston. <coughs> Thank you. Of, of course I'm for giving the money uh, that's uh, on target to the wellness center as quickly as we possibly can. And we'll see that it's done uh, as soon as we possibly can. And that's not the stopping point. We want to continue to get more funding uh, for the wellness center. Uh, as you know, we have a deal for our county employees. If, if the wellness center can get any of them to sign up, we will pay their membership. They don't, don't even have to attend. I got to do is get a, a county employee sign up, we'll pay it indefinitely. So we, I support the Wellness Center in, in a big way. Okay, that uh, is Dr. Patton's questions. Uh, we also would like to have a question. Dr. Ms. Robinson. I'm not keeping around a question. And this specifically is just educational. What portion of our operating budget for our fiscal court, and I'll address it to Judge Johnston, is dedicated towards public health? Is, is there a dedicated amount each year towards the public health of our County. Actually, uh, the, it would be hard to say that there is a percentage or even a dollar because it's broken down in so many ways. We have the incentives for the employees to, to participate in wellness programs. We have several of those. We have uh, the opportunity, uh, we have the reward system for anyone that doesn't take their sick days. Sure. So we have a reward system for that for our employees. Uh, so, uh, if all that's counted in, we do spend a substantial amount of money on the, the um, health and uh, welfare. Benefits to your employees and to our county employees, which I yes. know. If, if there are one item that is just public health? No. Okay. Thank you. I think we have a public health taxing district as, as well. I think that's where the, uh, the, the Wild County Health Center would be receive most of its funding. So I think that, that is a, something that is covered in, in, the, in that way. Anyone else? OK, 
guy, question uh, for the sheriff candidates again. In looking at the county health rankings, it seems that uh, some of the counties that close by have, are very similar in the number of alcohol-related accidents that occur each year. Uh, McLean County is you know, pretty close, Davis County, and uh, Hancock County is probably a little less. I'm not sure whether it's just the population, the way they do the calculations or whatever. But again, uh, you know, it, it, what specifically, I'm mean, asking the, the candidates uh, the question, what specifically isn't being done that could be done to improve public safety as far as the alcohol uh, compared to accidents are going? I, I don't see that us as law enforcement, when I speak to that, I'm talking to the sheriff's office, Peter Dan Parker, and the state police, that there's not something specific that we are not doing. Uh, I think that we are doing everything in our toolbox that we can to, to prevent this. Uh, I think uh, we have a, a number of DUIs in this county that have risen in the past three and a half years. Uh, so we're very aggressive on that. You can't in the summer months, sometimes in the winter, you can't uh, go a weekend without seeing a roadblock between all the agencies working together on these things. So we're certainly doing those type of things. We're also addressing with the ordinance, uh, you know, with the underage drinking and the kids drinking. We do that. Uh, with Together We Care, we have uh, sponsored, uh, uh, got short films and such. If anybody's been on our Facebook, they've seen that, where we work with kids and uh, with the underage drinking and such. So the, I don't think there's anything in particular that we're not doing that we should be doing. Because uh, obviously that's, that's not what we do. Thank you. Mr. Ray. As a policeman, I, I work for the city of Beaverdale. Uh, I work for Sheriff Thompson. I work for the previous sheriff. I, I'm, I'm always involved, and in, in the guys around the county here will tell you that I'm always aggressive when it comes to road checks. Uh, a lot of people don't like them, but we find a lot of DUIs that way, we find drugs that way. There's numerous things that we find, but DUI enforcement is one of those areas that we cover at those road checks. But I do believe that we can, we can increase that amount of enforcement by taking our current budget that the sheriff has, and we can break that down into other areas of more high rate for more deputies. So the more deputies we have, the more likely they are not to be tied up on other complaints, we can use those other guys for enforcement. So that, and that's just my approach to, you know, to solving the problem. Okay. Yes, uh, question all this. Mr. Herr. Uh, thank you, Don. And this is for the state candidates uh, for our office. Uh, the question is, to, will you continue to support Governor Brashear's work the work that he developed to provide expanded Medicaid coverage under the Affordable Care Act. And we'll ask uh, Mr. Cox to be our first. Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't use my <laughs> 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 Mr. Edward. We're receiving uh, funding for that from the federal government for three years. Uh, how? in the world we're going to pay for it after that I have no idea of take a huge tax increase on our citizens to, to cover it. Uh, I think there's many things we need to do to uh, reduce health care costs, uh, opening up uh, uh, insurance being able to uh, cross state lines, uh, education and, and so forth, uh, uh, communication with our citizens as to good, healthy lifestyles. Uh, so it, it's very hard to answer that question uh, because uh, I don't know what the situation will be in, uh, when those funds run out. It will be extremely difficult. Uh, he's added 300,000 people to the, to the roads, and that's a tremendous burden on our state. Uh, hopefully, uh, I, do, I do support all uh, uh, people having health care. The ones in need that they you know, can't afford it themselves. Mr. Cox? Okay, yes. Okay. I'm so yes. Mr. Irvin? I would have to ask you that what uh, 
So he was talking as a trouble thought to me. How will we continue to do that? How will the state? Do you have an idea how when the federal monies end, what will we do to continue to support it? Do you have any idea? That, 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 I mean, I don't do, know. But that's, that's, that, that is the reason that there are people saying no, is because they don't know how we'll do it. How will we be able to fund that? It's, it's just such a, a large amount of money that we have to provide on the state level that there are people who are saying they'll bankrupt our state. I mean, you need to really seriously think about this. Ms. In reference to OCA, Ohio County, as of today, 1,895 new folks are on insurance in Ohio County. Uh, Suzanne has come up with that speech before Our concerns last month, and especially today, after doing some research, only one dentist in this county takes Connecticut. This is for our state. How would you remedy that problem in Ohio County? You know, we, they have the insurance, but they don't have the access because we don't have the dentists to provide that service. And I'm going to tag on the first. I believe that in our new budget that was passed by the General Assembly, there is some funds <coughs> allotted to oral health. So how, how would you all find out you can have funds to benefit Ohio County? Okay, I let's uh, lead off with uh, Ms. Turley. without being subject to um, secondhand smoke or can't even simply walk through the break room without clocking in and clocking out without walking through a cloud of smoke. And we'll pose that question and we will try to answer in 30 seconds uh, to Mr. Cox. You hit the nail on the head. We can talk about the customers all day long, but it's the people that are working there who have no choice. And it's easy to say, well, they can find a job somewhere else, but a lot of times they can't. And so they have no choice. If I want to eat 10 cheeseburgers or Big Macs on the way home today to Madisonville, that doesn't impact anybody but me. And, but if I want to smoke 10 cigarettes in this room, it impacts everybody in this room. And so that's where I think uh, uh, we, you know, I'm off for individual rights too, but that's not when you interfere on, some, on top of somebody else's. And so, uh, my time up? Yes, sir. We're just trying to fit everybody in the microphone. <laughs> okay, Mr. Early. I 
difficult issue if we talk about that, and I do agree. You can't impose. When it does affect something else, it is a little different than just a private decision. Okay, and Mr. Avery. Here again, that's very difficult. Uh, if uh, an employee is in smoke, uh, the, uh, their employer should probably instruct them to do so outside the facility. Many of them uh, do that now. Uh, you can go to the Capitol and you'll see lots of uh, uh, administrative staff standing outside on their smoke <coughs> and taking the smoke. They should smoke uh, outside. Uh, but uh, it's a vocal issue. If the local city or county governments want to vote a uh, non-smoking ordinance, uh, that's their privilege and they support that. Thank you. Again, I think we'll kind of wrap this up. I'll just throw my two cents worth in it. You know, I heard a lot of things, uh, things are tough, or it's, uh, it's a hard choice, whatever. Again, being a politician, again, we thank those people that are running, because this is sometimes a very tough job, and uh, not a lot of thanks. But again, it's about making decisions. You know, we can complain and complain, but when the rubber meets the road, things need to be done. Decisions have to be made, and change is always hard. And again, uh, again, I tell you, think, think, think what you've heard home. Every one of you know ten people. Spread the word. What, what were your thoughts? What were the questions that you would like to pose? You know, to other people, and your responses here. And we're going to draw some more prizes. on the forefront of, the, of your agenda and um, helping the people.